So, welcome to lecture 17. We will introduce a new concept in coding today called local decoding. And in fact, we see the same code by 11 algorithm as part of this and trying to introduce local decoding. So, to begin with, so let's recap. We call the Hadamard code. This was the, the block length was 2 part k, the message length was k, and the distance was exactly half. So the linear code of each one. So basically, it was a code that mapped a k bit stream into a 2 k bit stream, 2 part k bit stream. It will be more convenient to view this LA not as a as an exponentially long string, but as a function. More precisely, this function, you will view it as a function on k bits. In, otherwise, I'm indexing the location by. Hmm? And which function was this? This was exactly the function which mapped x to so the dot product between x and k. Summation XL AI mod This was it was it, so the Hadamard code was the set of all linear functions. Those are the various code words, and this was the code. And we saw that we have seen that this code is excellent in terms of distance, it has distance half, it's pathetic in terms of break, it has inverse exponential break k by two part k. But let's go ahead and try to ask what can we do with respect to what about the decoding and encoding properties of this. So let's look at, say, for instance. So I'm going to ask three questions here. Usually we ask only unique decoding and uh, less decoding, but let's even ask exact decoding. Hmm? To ask how to do each of these tasks exact decoding, unique decoding, and this decoding. So, what do I mean exact decoding? So, decoding here is not, I give you the two code words. Or possibly a purported forward, something close to the forward. <clears throat> and what I want you to do is decode the message from the code. Word. So exact decoding is when there are no errors. Unique decoding is when the number of errors is less than half the minimum distance. And less decoding is when the number of errors are greater than half the minimum distance, possibly all the way up to Johnson radius, or possibly even more. <clears throat> so exact decoding, how do you do this for the other math code? So I give you the long string. How do you know which is the cable string? Uh, is that the coding is a, and there is no error? There is no error. You bring out the Huh? You need some of uh, and you need the ending and uh you can K, K linear players. So if you, yeah. so you look at the code at K linearly independent queries, you can recover. In particular, we just query it on the basis function h of e1, h of e2, h of en. You query it, you get a1, a2, an, and that's the thing. So just can, can recover. You don't using H E one or the way of H E K or if I was said any or any K linearly independent. Sorry, why am I calling it H? I've used the I've used the call it. So I'm giving an I'm giving I'm going to view the code word as a function, yes. 
and you can use it. Okay, query it as FFP1, FFP2, FFPK. You can or in any independence. I don't know. So exact decoding, there's absolutely nothing to do. In fact, exact decoding is very easy for systematic code. Systematic code, there's always what are systematic codes? I don't know if I ever defined the systematic codes are meant the message is part of the code word. There are certain K bits in the code, code word which are exactly the message bits. You just go read those bits. In fact, those have been said exactly read FE1, FE2, FEK. These are these K bits. You read them, you get the uh, message. So exact decoding is trivial. What about unique decoding? So in this case, what I want to say is I give you a function. I given given f such that such that. Such that there exists a the probability f of f at a random location x and lax say they agree at greater than three four points. Half of the uh, half of the minimum distance, half of the distance. Therefore, the minimum distance half the take half of the distance or so half the minimum distance is one fourth. Therefore, if you, have, if you agree on more than three fourth locations or you disagree on less than one fourth location, you should be uh, able to recover. Suppose I give you F instead of LA. How would you now recover? Even if such that there exists E, what I want you to do is find E. How would you do this? Okay, let's keep this question this part. But let me also state the list decoding question. So this decoding question. So we need to know firstly what is the Johnson radius for this one. If you actually look closely, the Johnson radius is, 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 is and you can you can get things arbitrarily close to halves. And in fact, this is what one of the problems in your current problem set gave you. That if you go up to half minus epsilon. Half is the distance. If you go up to half minus epsilon, if you go all the way up to half, there are two to the k code words. Every possible code word is possibly a feasible code word. If you go half minus epsilon, there are only one over that epsilon square code words in that region. Hmm? So this decoding is this. This decoding, I want to ask. I haven't solved the unique decoding question. So given yes. Mm -hmm. Find all A such that probability X F of X equals LAX is greater than or equal to half plus X. That's the list for the question. Let me just clear up these questions. This question the how many code words are there? Two to the power k. How long is the input? Two to the power k. You can basically take every code word, check it with the input, find out what. So, both the unique decoding question and the list decoding question, you basically have time to compare it with every single code word, find out which code word works best and output. There is no reason to. So, what's the whole point of this lecture? Triviality, both the if you if the algorithms, if the algorithm, the decoders if the decoding algorithm is allowed to run poly in 
four word length, which is two for k. In fact, it just be run linear and two for k. Then can go over all messages. And check that is two for k of them. Possibly not linear, for it, probably you need two for two k because each one you have to do two for k operations, so two for k into two for k. Mm -hmm. For all messages that find and decode, both either in the unique decoding case or in the case. So this problem, the triviality, because the rate is so large. It does not show the list side. For that, you need problem five and the problem five and the homework. That will tell you the list size of one word. It doesn't tell you the list size. Yeah, that's good. It doesn't tell you the list size is one. But anyway, you can just be code. You're allowed, you're allowed time for the normal in the code word length, and then you can do this. Then you say, okay, this is too easy. Can we actually can the de does really the decoder need to work in time poly and two part k? Notice the final message. The code word is two part k long, but the message is only k bits long. So you can now ask. So we'll ask the question: Can we're going to ask the question? Can the decoder run in time? Poly in message length rather than rather than poly in code word length. Question about the cross asking, can you run? Poly in message length rather than poly in. And usually these don't make a difference because if the rate is constant, these don't make a difference. One is just a constant times the other one. Even if the rate is inverse polynomial, doesn't make a difference. But this is a really bad code with respect to rate. So these are two different, completely different settings of parameters. One is k, other is two part k. Because I can ask this question, but then at this case that I don't even have enough time to read the function yet. I don't have time to read the input. The input to the problem is the received word. And the received word is two part k bits long. So how are you going to decode without looking at the entire input? Hmm? So what we now, so this will sort of, so you want to, so in particular, don't have time. To read the entire thing. Hmm? So, so these will sort of lead to this class of algorithms called sublinear PAM algorithms. You want algorithms which are sub usually whenever we talk about algorithm, you always assume an algorithm is order n at least. It gets to read the input once. But here I am talking about algorithms. In this case, even worse, it's not even sublinear, it's logarithmic in the input box. I'm going to ask of algorithms which are much, much smaller than the input. So what does this even mean? We need to first define the model. So what I'm going to say is here, the algorithm does not get access to the input. It doesn't get the, it's not like a Turing machine in which the input is written on a tape and it gets to read the entire input. What it gets access is an oracle to the input. So it can say, I want F at this location, you tell me. I want F at that location, you tell me. It gets access to the input only in oracle form. And it can query it only on a sublinear fraction of the input. In this case, even a logarithmic fraction of the input. It's up to it to query, decide which ones to query. It can throw possibly random coins and stuff. Notice that these algorithms necessarily have to cross random coins because if they, if they are a deterministic algorithm and you're going to query only at so many locations, like only so many locations are relevant to the whole problem. The other locations are irrelevant. You can just forget the other things. So all of these, whenever you talk about sublinear time algorithms, you're going to have Randomized sublinear time algorithms. Okay, so we are going to talk about so the word. So this actually this is the reason for the word local. This one. So what is local? 
It's a very, very localized algorithm. It doesn't get to see the input in lots of spaces. It only gets to see the input with a very, very small fraction of input in locations. And yet, it must be able to make conclusions. So we are tying our hands down considerably and saying, can even with our hands tied down so much, can we still exact decode, unique decode, and list decode? That's going to be our question. So we're going to talk about sublinear time algorithms. So by the way, this is a whole field in algorithms in which for various problems, we want to come up with this one. We will focus in this course, we'll only talk about the coding theoretic versions of the sublinear time algorithm, which have been local decoding and local list decoding and stuff. So sublinear time algorithm, basically here the algorithm is Unlike the usual thing in which it has, so the usual, the usual setup, the usual setup, the algorithm. The usual setup, the algorithm reads, reads the entire input. So this will say the input x. Here the input of x is a function f. Here it does not get to read the input. So what happens is this is no longer the setup. So based on it's going to toss some random points. It's going to toss some random points. Based on these points, it will decide I want to query the input of the height location. And then you get back x. Then it says I want to query the input at the j location, it gets back xj. And at the end of this, it should produce an output. So these are what I call from linear time algorithms. So here there will be two pa several parameters of interest. The interest of the interesting parameters, of course, will be the running time. Hmm? Then the number of queries. And sometimes even the random form, number of random forms. Sublinear usually refers to the fact that the time is sublinear in the input. But many a time you can just ask, forget about the running time, the time be exponential. Can I even make it sublinear with just the number of queries being sublinear? So you remove the computational aspect of it, just looking at the input that we get a much smaller fraction in the whole input, can I look, come up with some property of this? So typically sublinear. The sublinear refers to running time. Sometime we may just focus. On number of queries being sublinear, but the algorithm possibly being exponential time, despite not exponential time, lean, more than linear time in the input. Okay. And oh, all the algorithms we'll discuss in lecture today will be sublinear even in the running time. So well, notice that running time will always be an upper bound on the number of queries. Hmm? These are the important parameters we'll be looking at. Running time is always because you can make only as many queries as the running time of the algorithm, but these will be much, much smaller than the input time. And for the specific Hadamard code decoding, we are asking not just sublinear, we're going to ask. Logarithmic. Can you make things which are just logarithmic in the input first and yet be yet be able to decode it? So is the problem clear? Notice first the randomness is essential for this particular point. But the otherwise the input, the, you are saying that the output you care about just determines on this small fraction of the input out. So it's not really a function of the whole input. Then the problem itself is a simpler problem you are solving. Here, in general, all the problems you are solving are in which the function, the output is a function of the whole input space. Therefore, there's some randomization. So they, these algorithms will necessarily have some probability of 
error. They will not be perfect algorithm. There will be some probability of error, but that will hopefully can make uh, as small as possible. Is the setup clear? So now let's revisit our original three problems: exact decoding, unique decoding, and list decoding. That's why I brought up exact decoding. Exact decoding is trivial for if you allow to read the input completely, especially linear code, because linear codes can and be made systematic, and exact decoding is just take that part of the input. So now let's ask: exact decoding is still linear, still trivial in this setup. So now, so here local refers to local refers to sub -linear. That is, that is read input. No. Yeah, read input in a very small location of points. So now let's go to local exact input. How does one do this? It's the same thing. You just the locations are correct. Just query those locations. So now, instead of calling uh, big query, query f of e one, f of e two, f of e k, or any. In fact, you need to just make k queries, and you can get the whole. You have done with the whole problem. That's trivial. So let's go to the more interesting data. First one, which is called local. So what's the problem? What's the problem here? So you have given F. This is usually sometimes referred to as Oracle access to input. You're not having read access to input, but Oracle access to input. Given F as an Oracle. With promise. There exists a k in zero one k such that probability f of x and lax they agree at a lot of location. Say they agree more than the what the half the minimum distance is. Hmm? Fine. So that's the question. So how would you do this? You can try to constantly query f of e one, f of e, f of e two, f of e k. But these could be the erroneous locations. This could be the place where the function has been corrupted. So that will not work. So how would you do this? But you know, on the other hand, you know that if you pick a random location in the code world, it's correct with probability three fourth plus and so huh? So the random location is pretty correct. But now you want to do so how will you go about doing this? I'm sorry, I don't know. To play with it or something like that, and then try to solve the linear system with something like maybe square number or something. Yeah, so. That's one way of doing it. That's one way of doing it. We don't yet know how to make those approaches work. So what Pavel is suggesting is pick some order gain number of locations completely at random. Read the input at those locations. Technically, this has all because you know that three four plus epsilon fraction of these locations are correct. Hmm? You only need k locations. So suppose you pick you read hundred k locations. Hmm? 100k locations, you know 75k of them are correct. All you need is k of them to be correct to get the right answer. So in principle, you can go, you basically you can now, 
If you don't care about running time, no. if you just care about query complexity, you can run through the following algorithm. You query from 100k, huh? you know 75k of them are correct with high probability. 50k of them are correct with high probability, which are not born with you. It's super high probability you have. But you, all you need is k of them which are correct. So you go over all possible k size subsets of the 100k location. So 100k choose k. You go over all possible k choices. Go and then solve that system exactly. What each of them will give you a candidate A. Find out which of these A's actually uh, um, agrees with the input on say 50k. So there will only be one such K. So this is so this algorithm is extremely efficient in terms of queries. The number of queries is linear, but the running time is not linear. Yeah. So in that sense, it is a it's sublinear if you in terms of number of queries. In fact, it's quite logarithmic in terms of number of queries, but it is not uh, sublinear if you want to talk about the running time. I don't know how to. It will be great if I can make this algorithm. By the way, this is a big open question. I'll write, if I have time, I'll talk about this at the end of the lecture. We don't know how to make this. this one. Yeah, yeah, if you don't, so yeah, other math codes, if you don't care about this one, if you don't care about number of okay, queries, it's, a, it's, it's all, so that's what, uh, if you don't, if you're allowed to read the whole input, uh, the other math case is a trivial case. The question now is, I'm only allowed to read the input at very small number of locations, and I solve the problem. Hmm? So, what do we notice here? I want to get the, I want to lay my hands on, yeah, yeah, for, LA of EI, basically A1. A1 is LA of EI. I want to lay my hands on this. So once you notice this, what, what do we know? So, so EI, see, I want to get the I location, which is LA of EI. Hmm? What do we know about this? This is linear. I'm going to use the fact it's a linear code now. LA E plus R minus It is certainly this. Linearity will tell me this. Hmm? This is a random location. This is a random location. Huh? So this is going, even though this is not a random location, it's a fixed location that I wanted to be done. So this is okay. What I read over here. So instead of reading L of EI plus R, I could have read gap of uh, so you know that this. Is going to be correct. Instead of this, if I read this, this is going to be correct three fourths plus epsilon fraction of the time. Huh? How much will this be correct? This is also a random location. It's also correct three fourths plus epsilon fraction of the time. Therefore, one fourth minus epsilon is the error over here. One fourth minus epsilon is another error over here. So this equation is correct with probability, even if there's a union bound. This one is correct with probability. One with the error at most one fourth minus epsilon plus one fourth minus epsilon. Therefore, this is correct with probability one minus one fourth minus epsilon plus one fourth minus epsilon, which is equal to half plus two epsilon. So you, in other words, this this algorithm computing AI, it gives you AI not exactly but slightly better than a random point. So you are able to you this this way of so this is I'm going to query just a two location completely random one. These are not completely random locations; they are correlated random ones. But the marginal distribution on each of them is random. They are correlated, but the margin is random. So this is correct. The error here is at most one fourth minus epsilon. The error here is at most one fourth minus epsilon. Therefore, the total error is at most half minus two epsilon. Therefore, it's correct. With pro the whole thing is correct with probability at least half plus two epsilon. Hmm? So it does slightly better than random guessing. Now you just do a majority of this. You just pick some. So you know slightly better than ra random guessing. You do a constant fraction of these. You, you pick several such R's 
and on a majority, you are going to get this correct with pretty good problem. So now this suggests the following algorithm. Just do the following instead. So uh, the wrong majority. To boost access probability, that is, pick say R1, R2, RT, 0, 1 to the K, then set AI to be majority of gap of EI plus. Rj minus f of Rj, the parent, the one, and this is going to be pretty good. This is going to so you need to if you want this to be successful with constant probability, you need to pick one over epsilon square. So if half of epsilon you want to boost it to say ninety nine percent, you have to pick up one over epsilon square. Charnock Mohan will tell you if you want to make it one minus delta, you pick one over epsilon square times log one over delta fraction of. So you get one AI correct. One AI correct is not sufficient. We need to get A1, A2, A N. Hmm? Therefore, the following algorithm, which I will call this is not what we're recommended. Let's call it the GLC, GLW, in short for the weak version of what we're recommended. So and here I'll put F not as an input, it's an algorithm which doesn't take F as an input, but I put it on the superscript to say that it only gets Oracle access to it. So it's an algorithm of this type. Hmm? So what is this algorithm going to do? It's first going to pick R1, R2, RT. I'll tell how many you have to pick at random. At random. I want to reduce the error to, I want to reduce the error. So notice, to reduce the error to, to reduce the error to, uh, to reduce the error to constant, I need to read one over epsilon square. This one. Half plus epsilon, you're boosting it all the way to constant. You have to read one over epsilon, whether you do Charnock bound or whether you do Chebyshev, uh, uh, that's what you'll get. But if you want to reduce the error to even delta, you want to get the error, now you want, don't want to just get correct with 99%, but one minus one over, uh, delta. Uh, you want to get it correctly one by one. You then reduce it to one. You repeat it one over epsilon square into log one over delta fraction of the time. Hmm. So we'll pick t to be. What I will do is I'll actually pick t to be log n by epsilon square. So log k, sorry. And you'll see why I'm doing this. Log k one. Then for i going from one to k, set k i to be equal to majority j of f of e i plus r j minus f r j. Output a one to a k. Is the algorithm clear? So, why and the only thing I need to explain is why did I choose P to be that one? So, I can just So here I'm just going to use this Chernoff form. What's the Chernoff form I'm going to use? The proof of this is going to go via so let x1, x2, xn be independent zero one random variables. Hmm? And I'm very good. I'm just asking what's the probability that summation xi 
is greater than expected value of xi plus epsilon times n, which I want to fit. I think I can not fit epsilon times n. Okay. No, epsilon times n is good enough. This is less than or equal to 2 power minus epsilon, 2 epsilon square. It's exponentially small in minus 2 epsilon squared and this is the Chernoff form. Therefore, I want to write this error to say like something like 1 over k squared. Therefore, because I, mean, I need a1 to be correct, a2 to be correct, a k to be correct. I need all of them to be correct. So the error has to be smaller than 1 over k because the union bound over them. So let's may write the error down to 1 over k squared. So just choose that. Uh, that constant order log k, we say 2 log k by epsilon square. Therefore, I'm, I want to make this error to be something like, uh, so it, I, I just want to choose, so choose, so basically choose n such that exponential in minus 2 epsilon square n is less than or equal to 1 over k square. That is, n is equal to, so, this is not n, let's call this I have used it e previously. Long e, t, which would what will t be? T will have to be, t will have to be. Two of k by two epsilon square, but just log k by epsilon square. So that's the t which we get. So the error will be one by k square. For each for each each error will be correct with one over k square. If for all the a one the a k will be correct with the error at most. The union form one over k, therefore, with probability one minus one over k, you get the correct a1 to a. Is that right? Is that okay? Question. Yeah, I've done nothing for this. is very simple. Question is now we are going to so unique decoding is easy in this set. Unique decoding is easy. You just do this majority. What well, is going to make things more? Yeah. And we are now moving to the list decoding. What about this? Well, yeah, yes. Just uh, one question about the, the unit recording. So this run up in time is scale scale. Yeah, so this run up in time. Uh, the open problem is to say all this. The no, the open problem is not here to show all this. Open, so here, there's a difference between this and what? Okay, so here the points being picked up are not. So this is not exactly the open problem, but you know, one thing over here the points that are being queried at x, and we will deal with it later on again. But the open, I'll, I'll need a little more this one to come to the open problem. But the locations that are being queried here, unlike the algorithm which you suggested, just pick completely random locations and query them. Here the locations are not completely random, the locations are correlated. So there are, there are two ways in which you can access the oracle. The one way is I query the oracle and say, at this location, you give me the point. This location, you give me the point. This location. That is, you ask the oracle membership queries. Each query could be, should be uniformly at random, but the queries could be correlated. That's what the setting is. The other is you just get to press a button and it will tell you the value of the function at a random location. Hmm? It just pops out. This algorithm cannot work with that, in which you get you the this algorithm needs the algorithm to decide which are the queries. It will the algorithm will decide which is a random location and probe it because it's going to create a correlation among the various random locations. Because it needs if it queries EI plus RJ, it has to query these two locations to do something. It cannot just query completely random locations and manage to do it. So the question is since this is the difference is whether you have membership it's a membership oracle or you don't have membership oracle i'll if i have time i'll talk about this this is a different between your algorithm and my algorithm is this the question is can you make it efficient can you make it run and run in time or you take even with non-membership queries completely random queries okay 
formed the water species. I'm showing that this variable, whether you are using every K for the subject of the 300 K. It's the algorithm runs in 100 K. Okay, you're okay. 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 planting. I want run time. No, no, people don't allow. So that's what these are the algorithms which we know information theoretically they are doable. Because you read uh, 10K, you don't even have to read 100K, you read 10K things that already have all the input. You read 10K random location, you know it. Those random locations they, they, they tell you what the answer is. But it, from those 10K locations, can you actually pull out the answer? I don't know how to do it. If you're thinking you have to make it all a little more difficult before I say I don't know how to do this, I'll come to that right now. So, so let that we come to the water bottle is decoding question. So now, so, by the way, unique decoding GLW is clear. Hmm? And notice GLW will work as long as <coughs> the guarantee is any number larger than 3 4. Why do I need any number larger than 3 4? So, in this I needed it. I needed it to be slightly better than random point. Huh? And it was important that it was 3 4 plus epsilon. It was so, so I could have done this if this if it was nine tenths, I could have if this number was nine tenths, I could have handled it, it was seven eighths, I could have handled it. I cannot handle this so algorithm will work if it, it will not work if it becomes three quarters or anything less than three quarters. It doesn't work because then I I'm getting I, I don't have any advantage over random guess. It is good. I'm getting an algorithm which works with pretty badly. A random guessing algorithm is going to do better. I flip a coin that's going to give you yeah, much better than. What which one will tell you? So it's crucial for GLW that the success probability is at least three fourths less epsilon. Hmm. If you cannot do it, but what we now want this decoding is the following question. Given F such that there exists. And A so the probability f of x equals L A x. The problem is this the problem statement is this is greater than or equal to half plus epsilon. Now we are moving to half plus epsilon. We are going breaking the three fourth barrier. Output a list possibly. That contains. That's my only requirement. You can output a list now because there possibly is not a unique A that satisfies this any longer. Only if this was three fourths plus epsilon, there would have been a unique A. Now there's no longer. But yet you know that from the homework problem, you know the number of A's that satisfy this is only one over epsilon squared. There are not too many A's that can satisfy this to do the homework problem. By the way, for what we do in the rest of the course, we will actually. Give an alternate proof of the homework problem. We'll show that the list size is one over epsilon. We will show that we will give an algorithm that will output the list, which purely contains A, and the list size will be one over epsilon. Therefore, every such A has to be one among the way they can, because the list we are outputting is one over epsilon square long, they can be only one over epsilon. So this will be an alternate proof of the homework problem, but the homework problem is using analysis, this will be using more common Okay, so that's the question. The question here, and notice GLW does not work here because the probability has gone below the unique decoding radius. It GLW works only when the uh, when this agreement is at least is a little more than three four. Actually, it needs little more than three four. You at three fourth also it fails. The three fourth is going to be a random coin flip. I might completely ignore the input and toss random points. Okay, so the question is how do we handle this? And this is where, so by the way, the first algorithm is not called here at all. I don't know, it's just, I'm just calling it a weak version. Here is where all the magic of four red eleven is going to come. So that's the question. So let's stare at this thing. So why did, why did we, 
Why did this come up with the probability half plus two x no? So why did you know the every location you knew you were correct with probability half plus x? No? But here, because you were heating two locations, that's why you had to do a union mode. And these two locations, they were correlated from off. They were random locations, of course, you could do, but the random locations, I don't know how to extract any useful information on them. I want them to be correlated, in which if they are correlated, the best I can do is union bound over them because the adversary can go and ensure that when it flips this error, it also goes and flips this. We probably make correlated errors in this one. Now, suppose so what Goldberg 11 is going to do is suppose magically one of those locations you actually got to know the answer correctly. So there are two locations for AI to find out AI. I needed to know both the value at so this is an approximate equality, and it happens in probability this one. So I need to know both the value at EI plus R and at R. Suppose I told you the value at one location, one of those locations correctly. I gave you an assurance that this location is correct. Then notice that this probability now will jump. From you don't have two errors, you have only one error because the other error. So let's try doing something. So let's assume. Let's assume we pick random points R1, R2, RT at random. So the idea, so the idea is. To assume, assume or rather guess the value of LA of R J of LA of R J and for some for a set for a fixed setup for J being say one to T and obtain. LA of E I exactly with high probability. Hmm. That's the main and that's the usual red one idea. It seems an absurd idea in the sense that I did not know how to do one thing, so I'm just going to get around it by assuming I have access to it. But let's see how they get around it. So this will be right This will not solve the whole problem. So I call it quadrat eleven first attempt. It has access to yet to randomize this one. The algorithm will go this way. It's going to first step. It's going to pick R1, R2, R T. Zero one to the K. There. T, we'll figure out what the error probability come back to it later. Two, we don't know what the value is, so let's just guess the value. So we'll go over all possible. So for, for B1, B2, B T belong to 0, 1 to the T. So every possible setting of values for this, we are going to run the following algorithm. So for B bar, which is a t bit vector. These are the possible values for LAR along this. What am I going to do? We'll define set f b bar r bar. So this r, r bar is this one at a random lo at a location x to be the majority of. f of x plus ri minus pi. I have j for it in the past. Let's define the function. Hmm. Okay. What? So I'm going to come up with a new function f b of brx majority j hmm? it's not a function notice it's a function but the way we'll do it is i want to say 
This is a function which I can, whenever you want to query this value of this function at a particular location, I can simulate it using queries to the other function. So, if whenever you want to query it at X, I will query this at these locations. Basically, I'll have to query it at three locations to the other one, get those values, and then output the majority. So, this is what we will do. How, how, what's the success probability of this function? One by two power of zero. One by two, well, no. So suppose suppose that suppose we manage to get suppose we manage to get v one v. Right? So there are cases choices. Then the, the inner loop two is going to run several times. Let's look at focus on that particular run in which v one to v t have managed to pick it up correctly. Then it's uh, uh, it, right? so it, it gives you that at a random location x, it gives you the right value with half plus x. Half plus x. Half, no, no, it, just one location, one where you will give half plus epsilon. Now that I'm running this majority, I can push this. I can put the one, I can make it as small as possible. So I will now make it more than three fourths plus epsilon. I will choose P so that this it becomes larger than three fourths plus epsilon. Once this is larger than three fourths plus epsilon, when I apply Goldrack level on the V portion of Goldrack level on this, it will extract the function a exactly. So, line GLW to F BR to obtain A. Initialize this with empty set. A to list three output list. Okay. So um, here when you want to apply GLW, it uses the same answers. No, no, we use a different answer. So now this is a fixed form. It's a GLW. GLW thinks of this as a fixed function. For a particular choice of B and R, it's a fixed function. And it's going to apply, it will, it will have its own randomness. GLW will apply its own randomness. This one. So the question is if this R and B pair were as right choice of R and B. Hmm? So, so the observation to make is the following. So let's I'm going to do this in two steps. So the observation. So there's a so, so R bar. So let's assume. So notice there will be one in the inner loop two. There will be at least one thing in which you get you guess the right value because you're going over all possible two part B. So let's assume you have picked R bar. So the probability of R bar and a random choice of X that F of Actually, instead of B bar, I will actually use L A of R bar and R bar X equals L A of X. What will this be? So let's look at that. So when I'm using this is when I'm using the right set of B. And what what's the probability that this will be the case? Minus E a k of square one minus a of minus omega t. So this is going to be basically because this is basically the probability that f x plus r j are correct. Hmm? Hmm? Each one of them is correct with probability half plus epsilon. And so each one of them is correct with half plus epsilon. Therefore, you want the majority to work over here. So this was this, this, this error is basically this error is. Great. This is actually one minus exponential n minus epsilon square t. Hmm? Therefore, I can certainly make this at least seven a by setting t to be order one over epsilon square. So just let's set t to be order one over epsilon square. So just pick order one over epsilon square random locations. Hmm? So let's look at this algorithm. This algorithm is not 
So in this case, there is already there's something seems to be magical going on. So let's look at the algorithm. It picks, can you visualize that the list to be an empty list? Huh? It picks R1 to RT completely at random. Hmm? So we'll say one over epsilon square x. Hmm? And then for this choice of R1 to RT, it goes over all possible settings of B1 to BT, hmm? creates a new function FDR. What is this function? It's the majority, it's the majority defined state. When it creates, it just says. So G and W means oracle access to yes. It needs oracle access to the function. It needs oracle access to this. So whenever it access this function, it, this function is going to make uh, one over epsilon square queries here, get the answer, take the majority, and then output. So each query now to each query that G and W makes is now one over epsilon square queries that you will make to the function x. Yes. So let's first before doing the analysis, let's just find out the running time, let's find the number of queries. What's the number of queries for this algorithm? How many queries did GLW need? K log K queries were needed. And each K log K queries is one over epsilon square queries. Here. So this is, I want to claim this guy is K log K by epsilon square. Is that right? Is okay. But you also are taking over all the key possibilities. Huh? Sorry, so then this part, you are right. So this times 2 power 1 over epsilon square. Right. Yeah, so the point is, is that epsilon is uh, constant, therefore, this is the number of queries is still uh, we will we will improve this. We will improve this. right now. This is a terrible thing to write down. So yeah, you're right. This is I'm going over all these. What's the running time? So, what they have in the addition, I looked at the running time of this guy. What's the running time of this guy? It's k, 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 k squared log k, it should be k squared log k because of what? Huh? Uh, k squared times k. K square times t, so it will be lucky like k square log k. That's a crude upper bound you can use k square log k. So this will be k square log k of the GL. Each GLW will take k square log k. How do you get k square? What was your the various how do you get k square? This is only like one cross side over like huh? J for each beat you need k times k and you need k times k and you need k times k so for each bit how many operations you have to for each bit you have to need only k operations no you know like it's k times 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 Take care oh, of the amount of time to so, so just do this addition might take you EI yeah, plus. See, this mm -hmm. one once just writing RJ is going to take you K, K okay. and then there are K amount of the K square and K square log. Hmm? So K square log here is I should have written this for this K square log here and huh? by epsilon square. Epsilon square is not epsilon is constant because I'm getting going to get seven by eight over here. So this is k square log k. This is, this is a different epsilon from that epsilon. This epsilon over here. So this will be order k square log k, which is coming from this one. The k square log k into what? Into what? Into two power one over epsilon.
Fair enough. That's the thing over here. No, no, the k square log k, but each query, each yes, and each and, and there's another one over epsilon square because each query needs this is the number of each query of GLW itself requires one over epsilon square. Of course, it will get followed by the query doesn't matter. So that's the running time of this. Okay, with respect to epsilon, this is terrible, but I still want to say actually this is a great algorithm. Why is this a great algorithm? So what have we shown? We have shown actually let's make let's not make this this one, let's make this even more so. Let's make it 31 over 30. Okay. So, so by so by what have we said? So now I'm looking at the analysis of this. Hmm. By setting to be a suitably large constant over epsilon square, we can get probability over r bar and r that yes, when I had fed the right r bar and r, this at a random location x, so this is not r, this is x, is equal to L A of x is what is greater than or equal to 31 by 32. This is what we have got. Huh? But notice to for GLW to work, I need an algorithm that works with probability significantly larger than three quarters. This is not an algorithm. This is a this is not one F. There is a family of X. GLW needs a particular. But by this Marco from this by Marco, you can get by Marco, you can get probability over the random choices of R bar. Probability that yes, L A of R bar, R bar of X, this is now over X, is equal to L A X. This is greater than 7 8. This is at least 3 i I'm just doing a Marco like argument. You can check this out. That is, this is a random choice of two particular things. This says for most choices of the outer one. The inner one is at least 7 8, unless it's a number smaller than 31 over 32. You will you can easily check that this is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's an average inversion. So you get this. So now, now what happens? So now, so suppose so we pick random R, that means at least three fourths of the R's that are bars that you pick in the first step are going to give me a particular a function f such that for a particular choice of B's, they will actually give the right value a. Hmm? Hence, hence when, hence when R bar is chosen, hence with probability, what I want to say, you say what I want to say, then write down. Hence with probability at least three quarters. So there's a one quarter probability that the first R bar you pick up in this is actually a bad R bar, the very first line. But for that three quarters, so there is a part. So this algorithm at the end of it is going to output the list, and you want to check if that list contains the a that you care. You, you have a particular a which has half plus epsilon. So let's focus our attention on that particular a. Hmm? So how am I going to do the analysis? The analysis is going to be there one more thing that I should have said is the list size. What's the list size of this? Two power t, maybe. Probably. The two power t is probably going to add one element for each case. The two power t that is therefore two power one over epsilon. <laughs> okay. okay. Now let's go to the analysis. Let's go to this one. What I want to claim is I want to. So there's a part. This algorithm output a list at the end of it, and there is a particular a which is agrees with. This function f on half plus epsilon fraction of the time. I want to ask what is the probability that this a is there in the final list that is being output? Hmm? Now let's focus the attention on this particular a. So fix, so fix an a, fix an a such that probability f of x equals la of x is greater than or equal to half plus epsilon. Fix one of these a's. Now for this a. 
we do know that this happens. For this A over the random choice of R bar and X bar, this guy is equal to this. Hence, for this particular A, we also have, we have this quantity. So, for, for this particular A, at least the probability three fourth over, over the random points of this, the function that you have created, for at least for one of the Bs, is a good B. Is, is, is approximately LA of the probability at least 7A. Therefore, GLW, the weaker version of GLW, for this, once you have, once you manage to come to this point, GLW will work. So the probability at least three four over the outer points, there is one of the Bs in the list which will give you the right value, you guess the right value. Together with them, it's going to the uh, for that particular run of GLW, you will get A correctly, and that's the end of the story. Okay. So A will be in the list. So this does answer the whole problem. In fact, it does answer the whole question. The only drawback over here is so it is sublinear. The list size is not one over epsilon square as what I would have wanted it to be. The list size is two over exponential one over epsilon. So if that's the only one and epsilon list size I get, then this is, I have to at least run so long. I have to run in time, which is at least falling in the list size. What we we'll show actually is actually we can make a remarkable improvement. We can reduce the list size from exponential in epsilon, one over epsilon to poly in one over epsilon. Yeah. Yeah. So that the output of the algorithm gives a list of that much A. Mm -hmm. Does not mean that the radius function is all going to It doesn't contain all, but you can have done this one. Or... But you will just show that the out, output contains this with constant probability. With okay, then, yeah. Linearity of expectation will tell you. So, by the way, the argument which we showed will tell you with probability one half. The output contains this particular element. At least two times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now, question is: So all already. Hmm? Hmm? The next goal will be reducing this. Thing. From exponential one over epsilon to poly in one over epsilon. By the way, even this algorithm has no sophisticated machine, but it's already a pretty remarkable algorithm that you can query just k log k. For the dependence on epsilon is bad, the dependence on k is good. extremely good on this algorithm. It did. And it didn't do anything fancy over here so far. So what? So this is what this is the main actually the key point is they're going to reduce the list size further. Now why did why was the list size exponential? Because you had to guess B's value at all these uh, T locations. This is all the algorithm. Now the question is, do you really need you you do need B's value in all of them? Question is, can you get if you know B's value on a few guys, can you get B's value on other guys? If the points R1 to R3 were linearly, if they're completely arbitrary points, the B value on each of them is going to be very different. But suppose they were actually as all a subspace. The R1 to R3 actually formed a subspace of points. Then do you really need to guess the value of B on each of the elements of the subspace? Just the basis. So you can guess on a much party smaller fraction, but based on that, you will get the value for everything else. So this is what the Goldrack Levin says. Goldrack Levin says, let's not pick R1 to R3 completely at random. Let's pick them to be a subspace. So therefore, guessing, you only need to guess for the basis of it. Once you guess the basis for it, if you made the right guess on the basis, you have made the right guess everywhere. The only problem is now R1 to R3 we did with majority. Previously, you had that you were able to apply Chernoff bone. You won't be able to apply Chernoff bone because they are not independent. Even the subspace might not be independent. But let's see what we can do. Let's write down the idea with me. The idea is now going to be choose R1 to R3 such that. 
they, they are they form a subspace. Subspace. Hence, you guess values. of ELA at the R bar sufficient to guess on the basis. And that will reduce the list size considerably. So the modified algorithm which I'm going to suggest is the following is the final gold rate level on the thing. The gold rate level you have interact with here. So pick R1, R2, R3 at random. Okay, so I'm going to, I, I said pick these at random. I'm going to assume that this is the subspace and I'm going to, you'll see what I do. So pick these at random. Okay. For these locations, let's take now say for each. For each B1 to BT, B bar being equal to this, 0, 1 to the T, hmm? do the following. <coughs> one, two, A is going to be, hmm? what we will do is, we will actually think of this. Previously, we thought R1 to RT are all the arbitrary points. Now we are going to think of R1 to RT as only as the basis. And we we'll look at the entire subspace spanned by R1 to RT. That is basically what we are now going to do is for each S, that's a subset of 1 to T, 1, 2, 3, S is non empty. We are going to look at construct BS. What is BS? So R so uh, so, so R I is ideally by B I B I is is what our guess for what R I is L A F R I is. So we now construct the element R S. Uh, what is R S? R S is basically summation R I I N S. It's all linear combinations. So what will the corresponding B S have to be? It has to be this step because of the linear combination. So that's exactly that's the motivation for defining. You want to give me this bi, I'm going to define this one to be summation b and ins. Okay, so we we get the value on r1 to r3, uh, and then we, based on this, we once we have the guess on the basis, we are going to we have the values on the entire subspace. So now the second step which we will do is define function, define f of r prime b prime of x to be majority. Previously we had done what did what was the previous majority we did? It was f of x plus r j, but it's not going to be f of x plus r j. It's going to be f of x plus r s, where s is any subject. So you have minus b s. Okay. C apply GLW on f r bar b bar to get a and from Okay. 
So the only thing which we need to guarantee, so let's 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 look at the running time. So eventually we will be setting. Where T previously T was T was one over order one over epsilon square. So T is now can be order log one over epsilon square. We could shrink P. You just need to pick this as a random point, the other random are just linear combination with each other. So T is going to become considerably small. So Let's just let's do the simple things first. What are the number of queries? So as usual, the, this one is running k log k square log k. The GLW is sorry, GLW is k log k. No, no, the FLN, that FLN square is the how much you get over three fourth plus epsilon, but that is going to be a constant. Therefore, that epsilon is a constant. So k log k. And k log k, what you need to get is, uh, but each query, so it's k log k queries of the GLW. The GLW itself is going to be done to two power t times, two power t times, and furthermore, each query. For GLW, will have to be queried, will have to be simulated by yes queries. So there are two two parties over there. So not by two party. Okay. So one is one. The first two party is to is the number of Bs. The second two party is because a query to GLW. GLW has to make a query to FRB, and to simulate a query to FRB, you have to query every point in yes. That's another two party. Therefore, that's the total. Therefore, this is. Will totally come to order k log k by epsilon power 4. The running time will be what will be the running time? It will be almost the same thing if you just k square log k by, by epsilon power 4. It will be almost the same thing. The list size two power t, two power t which is one over order one over epsilon square. The list size will drop down. Okay, now let's do the analysis. So notice, let's look at the analysis over here. Once we could guarantee this. Hmm, once you can guarantee this, Marco will take over and then the rest of the analysis will proceed as the this one. So what we need to do is this guarantee. We need to guarantee it's sufficient for us if we can guarantee such a statement. If we can guarantee that, so I to distinguish the two of them, let me call this F tilde, F tilde. Because this is a different F from that one. So by previous analysis, Sufficient to prove probability over R bar and X that F, F tilde R bar and LA R bar of X equal so once again fix a particular A, fix a A such that probability f of x equals the ax is greater than half plus epsilon. I want to show that this a appears in the list. If I show that this is greater than 31 by 32, I would be done. So once again, why would I be done? From this, since it's the same argument, because since from here you can show that probability over r bar, the probability that over x, that f r bar, L A bar R X is equal to L A X. 
is greater than 7, 8, is greater than 3 fourths. Therefore, for at least uh, 3 fourths values of the outer guy, you will put it in function which are at least 7, 8. So, this is a good input for GLW and GLW will work. So, all that we need to show is this one. And then GLW will output. Hmm. So now we need to show this. What is this? So let's go to star. So what is star? In this bracket, you can when the bees are called. Huh? In, in this bracket, you can when the bees are called. Hmm. Yeah, when the bees are correct. So uh, because I have said I'm putting in LAR. Yeah. So when the bees, so there will be one element in the list that will. Yeah, yeah. So that is, so there will be other thing which will, there will be other one of the two one over epsilon square thing which will get the correctly and there you will output it. Now, rewriting star, what does star say? Star says, we pick R bar at random. So R bar, let's write the little more explicitly. It's R1, R2, RT, X. And I'm asking LAX is the majority. Then there's rewriting star. What is rewriting star? This LAX is majority of F of RS X plus X minus LA at RS. This is exactly the, the right left hand side of it. I just read it on this one because I'm assuming I have the correct values. The correct way, this is what I will have. So basically, this is exactly the problem. So we know each of these is independently correct, and they are correct with probability half plus epsilon. And I'm speaking of uh, some two power t values of them, and asking what's the majority. Each one is correct. With, so if this is correct, then this will contribute to the correct one. Each one is correct with probability half plus epsilon. I have to two power t of them. Question is, is the majority correct? I can't apply Chernoff mode because these are not independent. One RS and another RS are not independent of each other. So I can't apply Chernoff mode. But they are pairwise independent. Two, so, so what is this? Can't apply, can't apply Chernoff. Bound as the RSs are not independent. They are only pairwise independent. Why are they pairwise independent? I want to say if you have one set S and another set T. Notice each R is of its own. For every non-empty set S, RS is completely independent. It's a completely random state because it's a linear combination of random states. But take an RS and an RT, which are two different. I want to say pair of them are completely this one because they will differ on some random location. And that uh, they, this is going to be some sum that's going to be different from. They will be two different from. They, the difference of them will be a random guy. Right? Therefore, they will actually be, they will be pair by independent. And that's crucial for us. So they are not, they are not independent. But they are in fact pairwise independent. So you can't apply something like the Chernoff form, but you can apply Chebyshev. Hmm? You can apply Chebyshev and drive the error. Hmm? So Chebyshev, what's the difference between Chernoff and Chebyshev? Chernoff. So, so you want to, what's the, the Chernoff versus this one? Chernoff. So you use Chebyshev instead. What's the difference? They're not so. Uh, you want to drive half plus epsilon to say one minus delta. Hmm? What will Chernoff give you? Chernoff will tell you I will need at least one over epsilon square samples. Log one. This is the, what Chernoff tells you. There will be needs only some else. What does Chebyshev tell you if they are only pairwise independent? 
it will give you 1 over epsilon square, 1 over delta sum. So the dependence on delta is bad and it be should compare to this one. The dependence on epsilon is the same for both of them. So the variance, these are 0, 1 random variables, variance is the constant variance. So therefore, it will be 1 over epsilon square delta for this, right? If you do the calculation, this is what you'll get. I'm sort of running out of time. So one, you will get this. But notice that the difference is between one log one over delta and delta. But we what do we, we want to do? We want to push half the epsilon to 31 by 32. So delta here is a constant for us. It doesn't matter whether you're going to do Chernoff or Chevishev. We might have as well used Chevishev for it. So it's okay. Delta is constant. Okay to use Chebyshev over the advantage of Chernoff is it drive the error down much further. It gets you the confidence parameter much better. But we don't care. You know, 31 over 32 is enough for us. Hmm? So use the uh, delta as constant. Use okay to use Chebyshev, and that's the end of the whole argument. Actually, a very, very clever algorithm. Notice it also proves to you. So now you can ask so fix a particular A, you can show that it is contained in the list with probability at least three fourths. That's what we have shown. Therefore, if you run the list twice, it has to contain all the A's. If you run it twice, you can contain all the A's. And hence, this algorithm, quite an amazing algorithm, it runs in just times k log k, looks at over epsilon for four times. Produces a list of size one over epsilon square. It says this list has to contain all the elements, all the A's that are close to it. It's quite a stunning application of uh, it's a very clever usage of pairwise independence and stuff to do the list encoding in the other one. Okay, well short time. Okay. Want to just return to Pavel's question. So this the problem that is open between us. So now you are given a string x, you're given a function f, and you are told it is half the epsilon close to some mean like that's the exact setting we have. But here we pick the quest queries of our choice. There are random queries, but they were correlated randomly. We pick queries from a subspace and query the function in that subspace. So we query queried it a not a subspace, but an affine shift of a subspace. Basically, we queried it at f of x plus r s. The whole thing we queried it and got it. Suppose you didn't get access to the function that way. Suppose all you get is access, you get a, you, play, you the oracle, you press a button, it will tell you the access to the function at a random location. This is what you get. What we already showed is this is good enough for you to actually solve the problem. The same analysis which we did beginning, if this is good enough, if you get a linear track to number of samples, information theoretically, you have enough information to extract the thing. Can we do this in polynomial time? We don't know how to do this. In fact, crypto, there are, it's believed that this is a hard problem and crypto systems have been based on the fact that this problem is hard. So it's not just, we don't know how to do it. We strongly believe we cannot do it. This, this is called learning parity with noise. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a famous, it's a well-known hypothesis on which the hard based, the hardness of which Several systems are based. This thing, LWE and LPN. Yeah, yeah. This is LWE is Gaussian noise. This is uh, this is learning parity with noise. Learning parity with noise. So this is yeah. So we believe this problem is hard, so hard that we don't even have that we run actually. There are crypto systems, but several homomorphic crypto systems actually are based on the hardness of this problem. We do have some algorithms. We have algorithms which run in two per, we know we can do slightly better than exponential. We have algorithms that run in two power k by log k. The exponent is k by log k. So we don't expect, because of the crypto system thing, we don't expect it to run in polynomial time. The question is, can you make that k by log k into something slightly smaller than that? It's open, and that's an interesting question. We don't know how to do it. Whether that, or to show that k by log k is right under some other more simpler assumptions, that is also open. That's the learning with parity noise. This is not learning parity with noise because we are waiting to query the function at your point of choice. Okay, and stop with this.
So there have been extensions of this for doing for quadratic codes and all. The point is things are not so nice. We use linearity in a big fashion over here. Degree two or not. So there's a paper by Clivens, uh, Parikshit Gopalan, and uh, David Zuckerman, which extends this to quadratic. I don't don't know how it further extends it to this one. For yeah, so I, the other ones I don't know how to explain this. Yes. Yeah. Hoping 